that's not usually how I enter myself, but my name is Shelly and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It has been a hot minute because stuff happened and I did not plan or do the things I should have done. Um, basically, my very good friend Katie came and visited me. Yay! Um, and then we sort of went traveling. As you do. Uh, so yeah, my plan to pre-film a bunch of videos and then edit them, have them up in time, or edit the videos I had already filmed. Yeah, yeah, no, none of that happened. So it's been a while, but now I'm here. And uh, I'm here very, very, very late uh, March wrap up because, you know, might as well, might as well. Um, so let's, let's just get into it, shall we? Yeah. So, I read some sort of number of books this month, uh, in March, I mean, because it's late April now. Um, so I'll just uh, go through them, shall we? So, I read, as part of our Chaos Core book club, uh, I read my pick, uh, I read A Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. So... I love this book. Uh, everyone else, give or take, give or take. Um, I saw the show, the Prime BBC, whatever it says on here. I saw the show with Michael Sheen and David Tennant, and it, that show is so good. Uh, you don't have to read the book. But do see the show. Uh, I did really, really love this book as well. <laughs> so basically, it's it's about the end of the world, <laughs> and uh, we go through the days counting down until the actual end of the world. And what these two, the angel and the demon go through basically yeah let's see so I really like this book I will say it definitely is one of those it has its own kind of humor it is I mean it did come out in I believe 1990 um I mean Neil Gaiman and Tara Pratchett look I mean Tara Pratchett is oldish here but they do look a younger than I mean today also Tara Pratchett isn't actually with us anymore. I'm going off on a tangent now. So this is, oh, 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 ignore oh, everything, uh, ignore everything. So the jokes in here are a bit dated, but also not, because it's basically making fun of religion in a way. And uh, yeah, that amuses me a lot. I, I'm not going to lie, that amuses me a lot and uh, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, but yeah, it it's quite possible that if you're not a native English speaker, that I mean, the English isn't your first language, it's your second or third or whatever, uh, you might not get the jokes in the same way, uh, possibly. Uh, also, it might possibly be more leaned towards British humour, you know, the dry kind, because British humour is basically dry. Um, yes, I am allowed to say that, thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's a special kind of humour, not really for everyone, but I thoroughly enjoy this book. There you go. Watch the show anyway. Did I have to read the book? Watch the show. Yeah. And then I also picked up The Cat Who Saved Books by Sosuki Natsukawa? Possibly, definitely not how you pronounce that name. So this is originally a Japanese book that has been translated. And what I really enjoyed about this book is the fact that it's been kept as the, the the traditional it's not been changed more than 
uh, it being written in English instead of Japanese because I cannot read Japanese. I can read English though. Uh, but you know, the names and the places and the, um, what's the word? The, the kind of culture in it, it's still very much there. Um, so I appreciate that very much. However, I'm not sure I actually understood what the whole point of the book was about. But basically, there's a talking cat who helps this young man who's... I don't remember what the actual word for it was, but it's basically a modern-day kind of a hermit kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, it was cute and sweet in that way. I'm not sure it's a book I would actually recommend that everybody should read, but... It's, it's a short one. It's like 200 pages or something. So, I mean, if you want to try a hand at it, also, um, the font in it is uh, quite large. So, it's it's a very fast read. Um, but it's probably has a much deeper meaning than I was looking for in a book. But I do like the cover. It's a books. <laughs> it's a books. It's a pile of books and a cat. One more can you want? One more can you want? Another short book that I read was Heartland by Anna Simo and also a cover I very much appreciate. This book, however, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm gonna read you the blurb on the back um, because even having read this book, I have no freaking idea what it's, what it's about and uh, I'm going to read the blurb and then I'm going to say what, whatever. <laughs> so, in a word drunk romp through an alternate pre-apocalyptic United States, Anasima's fiction debut, Heartland, is the uproarious story of a thwarted writer's elaborate revenge for the woman who stole her lover. Blending elements of telenovela, pulp noir, and dystopian satire. There's only one solution for a nasty case of writer's book, and that's murder. Specifically, that of one Mercy McCabe, a cunning Soho art dealer who was once our Latina narrator's rival for the scrumptious a baby or bebe, I don't know. When she discovers that McCabe has squandered baby's uh bebe, 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 I don't know, attract affections of stealing her way, revenge is not enough. McCabe must confess her guilt, sentence herself and beg for her one execution. Soviet style. In the all too terrifyingly familiar <laughs> America of Heartland, the inconceivable has become ordinary. Corruption and greed at the top have led to mass starvation in the Heartland. Hordes of refugees have escaped from the resettlement camps and attacked the cities. The puritanical caliphate, I don't know, uh, has toppled Constantinople with America in its sights. Meanwhile, escaping her New York life in disguise, our heroine lures McCabe to her home turf, a hilltop house in the Great Plains where her parents worked as domestic servants. Her nemesis, though, is slippery and McCabe disappears, threatening to ruin a homicidal master plan so detailed as to be akin to love. Heartland is hilarious, genre-defined debut uh, that confronts taboos of race, as, uh, assimilation, and sex through a high-voltage tale of love, language, and revenge. That all sounds good and fine. I don't know that any of that actually went on in the book. We'd go through, like, it was like we were being in so many different places at once it was like in the writer's head in the like in the real world in like the fantasy world of the writer narrator whatever and then all of a sudden they would be like very weird sex scenes i mean i don't mind sex scenes as a whole in general but whatever these kind of sex scenes were, I don't even know how they happened. I just know that all of a sudden we were in the middle of one and I don't understand them at all. Uh, 
Basically, I've never had sex like this, and I hope I never will. Because it was just fucking weird. Enough of that rant, let's move on to a different book. So, uh, then I also read Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. So, <sighs> calm myself here. This is a book that people rave about. People love and they just rave about how good this book is. I did not like it. I did not like it in the slightest. Uh, I I just can't grasp what people think is good about it. It was too much hopping back and forth, for one, in time, because we're like looking back and thinking, we're thinking back and forth and I don't even know anymore. Uh, we're switching characters and and one point this character, because it starts off with like Lydia's dead, but they don't know this yet. So Lydia is one of the daughters in the family and uh, she's found dead. And that's how the book starts. And then we go back and forth thinking of how uh, the mother at some point ran away and tried to start a new life. But then she was found and came back and then her life before she even met her husband and had all these children and made a family and like how it shouldn't have been the way it was supposed to be. I mean, it, it, it's, it's very much, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't like this book. Uh, I have nothing to rave about about this book I have probably uh, about words uh, I yeah rants basically rants um, yeah at least it was a short book that's all I really can say more uh, so then uh, the midnight library by Matt Haig um, <laughs> I have questions about this book as well. Uh, also, at least it was a short book. I didn't dislike this book as much as uh, Everything I Never Told You and Heartland. But I do have questions. I mean, it's very much a like philosophical kind of a thing. What could have been, what had I chosen this life or... Uh, yeah, basically the main character has regrets and she wants to die and that's how this book starts and then she ends up in this library of possibility of possible life she could have lived um and so each book is a life that she could have lived and she goes through them all one by one more or less not all of them um and she like looks into these lives that had she chosen this at that point, had she chosen that at this point in time, how is that different from the way, from the life she actually had? So it's a lot about regrets and trying to undo and see what could have been, but also at the end, should we really have all these regrets? So on and so forth. So. The end is a bit, and also when we start going through this life, they're exciting in the beginning, but also like so confusing in a way. Uh, but they're only exciting so many times, and we go through more lives than I possibly wanted to go through. Um, after a while, I just found it boring, and then. By the end of it, it was just a bit, eh, okay. I will say this, though, because it happens in the beginning. What do you have against cats? What? What was that? What was that noise? Um, basically, um, the cat, the, what's her name? Nora. Uh, Nora owns a cat and basically this cat dies in the beginning. And then she also like lives through a different life seeing how if that, this cat hadn't died. And spoiler, the cat dies again. Uh, basically this cat was just meant to die. And I'm wondering why did this cat have to die so horrifically every time? 
yeah, it did make me put down the book for a little bit, but then I just figured, yeah, I'm just going to get through it because it's a short book and I just want to have it finished. Uh, and also I did want to go, yeah, so the camera totally died and I don't know what last thing I said was. Um, basically, Matt Haig, what do you have against cats? The end. <laughs> So, for the last physical book I read, it was Two Kinky Bits Secret by Karen M. McManus. So, I've had a bit of a hit and a miss kind of a deal with, like, when it comes to Karen M. McManus's uh, books uh, previous. Uh, so, I've read One of Us is Lying and One of Us is Next. Pretty sure that's the titles. And... Yeah, they they were definitely hit and miss kind of a thing for me because I guessed the thing too soon and made it boring. Anyway, to this book. This book also has the spray judges, by the way, which I, I love. This book was so much better. Uh, I would highly... Um, I would highly recommend that you pick up this book if you're going to pick up any of the books well, that I've read so far of her books, um, then this would be it. Because it was more... I don't, I don't want to say easy. It's it's an easy read as far as that kind of thing goes. Uh, but it still kept you guessing as to who did what, what happened, yada, yada, yada. It, it's a mystery if you hadn't figured this out. That's what this author writes, I think. I do like that book. So as far as the um, the physical books of March, they were definitely, let's say, hit and miss kind of a deal. Um, I did also uh, listen, read, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to say I read an audiobook because that sounds so wrong in my head. Um, so I listened to uh, The Hunger Games. Those were the books. And they are somewhere on my shelf because I've read them previously, physically. Uh, but uh, Katie, when Katie was here, she rearranged my shelves and I can't find anything. Love you. Um, yeah, they're here somewhere, so I can hold them up. So picture here, maybe. Uh, so I read, listened to The Hunger Games, Catching Fire and Mocking Jay on audio, all read by Tatiana Maslany. And I do have a separate video for that. So if you want to know my thoughts and feelings about those books, um, please go check out that video. Um, in short, I really enjoy Tatiana Maslany's reading of Hunger Games books. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up. So, yes, before my camera dies again, because that very much can happen. Um, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you all next time. Take care. Oh, bye bye.